from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that aims. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I... I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Here's a story that was sent to you by over 100 listeners. Over 100. I mean, you got to be kidding me. 100. I mean, it just blows me away. I walk in here after a long weekend, and well, long for me anyway. A long weekend. <laughs> I walk out every day after a long weekend, I get a hundred of the same email. And uh, I'm so glad you guys are on the ball, even on weekends when, when I'm not here, you're on the job. I think it's fantastic. You may recall many times on this program that I have told men to guard their sperm jealously. Don't let it out of your sight. Put it in a condom, put it in a Kleenex, put it in a sweat sock, but by all means, don't give it to another person. Because every one of those millions of little spermatozoa are like little blank checks with your name printed on them. They're like little credit cards with your name on them. And it doesn't matter what anybody promises to do. It doesn't matter if they say, I can't get pregnant. It doesn't matter if they say, if I ever got pregnant, I'd have an abortion. It doesn't matter if they say, help me have a baby and you'll never have to help me out. It doesn't matter what they say. What they do is frequently a different matter. And you can be forced to pay, even in cases where you think you can't be forced to pay. There are no exceptions to the rule. None. And I rarely say that. But even the most surefire methods of passing on your DNA, the ones that you thought were airtight and guaranteed, are not. I told you, don't be having babies with people, especially people you don't know or don't know well or haven't been with for a long time. Don't do anybody a favor. Somebody in your family can't conceive, guess what? Their problem. Friend can't conceive, tough. Neighbor can't conceive, not good enough. If you see a list on Craigslist that says, I want to have a baby NSA, no strings attached, go to the next listing. Do not respond. And yet many of you morons continue to do this. You continue to do it. Now, I'm going to read you today's story sent in by over 100 listeners. And if this doesn't convince you that what I'm saying is true, I don't know why I keep hitting my head against the wall. I really don't. I think some of you people want to just ruin the rest of your lives. You want to ruin yourselves. Here is the story. This from foxnews.com. A New York doctor who donated his sperm, donated 
his sperm to help a gay colleague, okay? So there's a gay doctor who works with this guy, okay? He's a doctor, the gay colleague, also a doctor. He donated his sperm to help his gay colleague conceive. Well, now he's been ordered to pay child support for the boy who is now an 18-year-old living in Oregon, this according to the New York Post. Did you hear about this? Well, why waste our time with the Fox News story? Let's go directly to the New York Post. Here's the New York Post story. A sperm donor who sent gift sign dad to his biological son has been slapped with a child support order 18 years after helping his friend get pregnant. The Nassau County man, Nassau County is on Long Island, east of New York City, donated his sperm to a work colleague and included his name on the child's birth certificate, idiot, saying it would give the boy an identity, court documents revealed. He then blurred the lines between donor and full-time father by sending money, presents, and cards signed Dad and Daddy. So he thought he was doing the right thing. What a, what a, what a maroon Bugs Bunny used to say. Yes, he called the kid dad and daddy in the cards, the presents with the money that was sent. Had phone chats now and then. Kids heading for college. But it says here the good will of the man backfired. The court ruling says he is now liable for financial support of the 18-year-old who lives with his mother in Oregon. The man's lawyer, Deborah Kelly of Potrush and Dobb, a law firm in Garden City, New York, said, where have you heard this phrase before, folks? It really is that no good deed goes unpunished. Who have you heard say that? She said, when people do things they think are being done with good intentions, and there is an agreement, and one of the parties reneges on the agreement, it is certainly disconcerting. She said the time lapse was, quote, unusual. The attorney for the man, Deborah Kelly, said he was assured that he would have no responsibility on his part. Sound familiar, boys? And, of course, 18 years have elapsed where there hasn't been responsibility. He did not anticipate this would happen now when the child is almost an adult that the mother would come forward for child support. She said her client had requested a DNA test, quote, because we have no concrete evidence he is the father. Get this. Nassau County Family Court Judge Ellen Greenberg ruled on November 16th against a paternity test saying it would have a traumatic effect on the child not a child anymore. This is an adult. The child signed an affidavit stating he has, quote, never known anyone other than this man to be his father, according to court documents. If payments were to go ahead, the child support would be determined based on the mother's earning capacity, the reported income of her partner, who is also a doctor, and the father's income. Mm hmm. Because of privacy concerns, all parties remain unnamed. The mother is identified in court papers as P.D. The alleged father as S.K. And their son as K.K. The donor was a married doctor at a Nassau County hospital. When he donated his sperm to a hospital resident and her female partner in the late 1980s. Okay, We're talking lesbians here. At the time of the boy's birth in 1989, the man orally agreed he would not have any rights or benefits in the child's upbringing. The father said he had contact with the child from his birth until 1993 when the lesbian couple and his son moved to Oregon, according to court documents. From then, the contact dropped to seven phone calls in the past 15 years and one meeting for a few hours three years ago. About one million American children are the product of sperm donors. 
the majority of them being anonymous fathers with 30,000 more born each year. Idiots. Court rulings over parental rights from artificial insemination remain murky. Are you hearing this? Let me repeat that line, please. Court rulings over... Are you listening? Court rulings over parental rights from artificial insemination, which is what happened here, they remain murky. You know what murky means, okay? This is a gray area of the law. The law isn't really specific, guys. says here that similar cases across the country have varied. The Washington State Court of Appeals ruled in 2004 that a donor isn't bound to pay child support unless he and the mother have a signed contract. But earlier this year, a Pennsylvania judge held a sperm donor liable for support, noting he had spent thousands of dollars on toys and clothing for two children that he helped a lesbian couple conceive. See, no good deed goes unpunished. That's absolutely right. Now, all this says to me is that, once again, your professor has been giving you advice that now is borne out by actual facts, actual statistics, actual court documents. All men listening to me right now, if you're planning on donating sperm, stop. Cancel the appointment. Don't be donating sperm to sperm banks. Don't be doing favors for your coworkers. Don't be trying to pick up chicks online who say they just want to have your baby and there'll be no strings attached because I'm telling you, I'm warning you, I'm reminding you, I'm begging you. No matter what people tell you, no matter what promises they make, nobody can promise there'll be no strings attached. They can, they can promise it, but the promise will not and cannot be kept. Any time at all, that person can change their mind, and there isn't a goddamn thing you can do about it. Does donating sperm make any sense after you've heard what I just have to say? Tell, tell, tell. Like this. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. What do you have against women? Nothing. My manhood, usually. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Like It Show at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Should anybody be donating sperm now? More evidence that that's not a good idea for the guys. A New York doctor who donated sperm to help a lesbian colleague conceive a baby back in the 80s is now ordered to pay child support for what is now an 18 year old living in Oregon who we hadn't spoken to or seen in seven years. It was a sperm donor, folks. Anybody here in favor of sperm donation? You know, every time I do this topic, it's amazing how many of the fertility clinics don't call in. How many of the uh, couples unable to conceive don't call in. They're scared to death to talk to me about this. Because they know I'm right. Primarily, when I discuss this topic, we get people calling in who agree with me. But those who would have a vested interest in disagreeing don't even pick up the phone because my argument is so powerful, nobody can beat it. You know I'm right because no one ever calls to argue with me about this. No one ever tells me I'm wrong, ever, because I'm not wrong. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Stephanie, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. How are you, Tom? I'm great. Good to hear it. Hey, listen, this guy that you were just talking about, he made two mistakes. Mistake number one, the big one, obviously, donating his sperm. But the second mistake, I think, is even worse. He's calling himself dad. He sent cards and... uh signed cards, talk to the kid, all that stuff. He's acting like dad. He obviously considers himself the father of that kid. No, but the point is he was trying to do a nice thing. 
That's true. That's true. Though that was mistake number one. It was a mistake. It was, no, mis- no, no. Mistake number one was donating sperm. Right. Right. Mistake number one. two was letting them try to claim that he is the father because right. at some point in time he was a nice guy. Exactly. Right, but but you know what? He let them call him dad. If he wanted no strings attached, just like that, the woman said that it was going to be, then he shouldn't have even let that happen. Because strings will stay with you forever. Look at this. Bit him in the butt. Eight yeah, but years. nowhere, I'm, I'm not nowhere am I reading here that it said in the agreement that if he refers to himself as dad, that the agreement is off. Well, that's true, but if he's considering himself the father, then he should be liable for child support. This is like the people who try to get around prenuptial agreements. And by the way, (laughs) I've had prenuptial agreements. Uh, The people who get around prenuptial agreements, like let's say I own my house before you move in. Right. And before I marry you. Right. And it's my house. My name's on the D. Sure. Later on, after you move in, because I don't want to fight with you and because it's just easier and because I don't want to explain it to anybody else, I say, hey, Steve, why don't you and your wife come over to my house tonight? Or no, to our house tonight. Mm-hmm. And and uh. Steve says, fine, and he comes over. And then after a few years of saying, hey, come out to our backyard for a barbecue and things like that, there are women who go to court and say, well, he's been referring to it as our house now for years, so it must be our house. Sure. You know what? Saying something doesn't make it so. Well, that's true. I, I definitely see your point on that. But I also think if he is, especially if he's signing cards, that's how they're going to get him. No, no, you know, it's not a matter whether they're going to get him. Him. They're gonna, they him. They would have gotten him if he sent nothing. You think uh, so? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to warn the sperm donors. Uh, this is They're, they're just going to say your DNA matches, pal, tough. Just like they say when you knock up your girlfriend or you knock up a one-night stand. That's where this is going. Right. right. And, and, I, that, that's, and that's ridiculous. They shouldn't, they shouldn't, be, they shouldn't be liable. I mean, it's, it, it's just ridiculous. You're, you donate your sperm to a bank. I mean, you, you're never even going to see that person. And the woman who goes there to collect that sperm for herself has no right to go after that bad dad because obviously she wanted to do it by herself, quote unquote. So well, they from- say they say here's how they always get around that. They say it's to benefit the children. If the children want to know who their father is, that maybe they've got a right to know. Oh, right. Well, then the woman should have found that before she took her Forget about the, the, the But no, the women, a woman didn't have to think about it. Because women have the prerogative right. to do whatever they want. What happens right, is right. people are <laughs> suing. They're suing sperm banks. I want to know who number 18,626 was. Oh, that is so ridiculous. And the sperm banks, which are stupid enough to keep this information around, are being forced to give it up. Right, and that's not fair. That's not what should happen, for sure. But that's what's happening, and that is why we need to go on strike. We need to withhold our sperm and say no one else is getting it. Exactly. Keep it to yourself. (laughs) Right. Don't be giving it out. No way. Wow, because that's a lot of money you could uh, have to end up paying. Is this guy, do you think he's going to have to do back pay, like 18 years worth? That's a great question, dear, and I, you know what? I don't even know if we know that yet. That is bad news. Bad news. <laughs> Guaranteed it's set up so the attorneys are going to collect a fortune and so that the guy will end up paying and paying. and pay. Oh, he's a doctor. He can afford it. You know what they're going to say. Yeah. Wow. That's terrible. But isn't his mom or one of the moms uh, a doctor, too? Yes. But why do they even need more money? Stingy. Well, because he should take care of his fair share because he's daddy. Right, and convenient that now he's 18 and going to college, and hmm, now they now need, they need help. Yes, now they need help. <laughs> oh, no, that's bad news. I keep know. Keep it in your pants, boys. Keep it in well, your pants. Just keep Do it in your condom, boys. <laughs> Do not share it. Don't like be giving it away. In your sock, in your condom. Well, anywhere. In your bed sheets, something, right. but don't share it. <laughs> don't be sharing it with other people. Mm-mm, 18 years you're going to be paying. Uh, or more. Yep. I mean, keep in mind, this boy we're talking about is 18. Yeah, and I love how 
the judge was worried about his feelings, this boy's feeling. He's 18. He's an adult already. That guy shouldn't even have to pay anything because he's already 18. My dad didn't pay child support after I turned 18. The day no, I turned they're, it, it was off. They're changing that now. Now they're telling people, well, if the kid goes to college, he could be 21 or 22 or until whenever he's done with college. Then my dad owes me money. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, sir. They don't have a verdict yet, right? They don't know what's going on. This is just starting. Well, I hope you update us. Let us know what's going on. Of course I will, dear. Thank you so much for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, this is my first time calling your show. It shows. And I just want to say that I've had a couple of friends over the years that had uh, suggested I should do something like that. And I said, I don't think so, because I can't afford to take care of a kid at that time. So, in my opinion, if anybody who's going to do anything like that, you know, they should consider the consequences of their actions. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell guys. And, of course, they continue to be stupid. Of course, this guy did it 18 years ago or 19 years ago. But uh, I'm telling you, there are guys out there right now doing it. And I get calls from them all the time. Mostly they see ads on Craigslist. For NSA relationships, no strings attached. I just want to have a baby. You don't have to do anything. There's always adoption to consider. There's adoption. Uh, there is in vitro fertilization. How about you go to a a, a, a fertility clinic instead of Craigslist? And my opinion, I wonder why at times they don't consider taking a. Uh some kind of legal measures to prevent something like that from ever happening. No, no, the, you can't. You can't stop it. And the reason you can't stop it is because the attorneys are ingenious and they have figured out uh, the way to get away with this by saying that it's the best interest of the child. The child's rights are, 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 are at stake here and the mother can't take away the child's rights. Well, but I myself wouldn't, wouldn't do anything like that, not for anything. No, I, I hope uh, that you're not the only one, Dan. I hope everybody listening to me refuses to donate sperm in any form. A Dixie cup, in vitro fertilization, having sex with your uh, sister-in-law, whatever. I hope everybody out there says no to donating sperm to anybody. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. This is my first time. Yes. I just want to say that um, my brother did this a while, a long time ago in college, and it ruined his life. It completely ruined his life. They tracked him down. I don't know how. Um, they went after him for money, and like you said, the attorneys do find a way to get you. They will get you. And they got him. They well, got all, him. They, all they need is your name and address, and uh, the rest of the information is gettable. And the sad thing about it is that my brother refused to have any type of relationship with this kid whatsoever. And what ended, ended up happening is very, very truly sad story. This kid ended up real messed up. because, And then, and then the mother turned around and tried to blame it on my brother, which is ridiculous. And let me say something, Tom. Please allow me to say this. All you tramps out there who decide to go ahead and have those no-string-attached relationships and whatnot and go to sperm banks and do whatever it is you want to do to have a baby without a father, which is a big mistake. I don't care who you are. You have no business trying to raise a child on your own. And you never ask this child for permission and never once take into consideration the feelings of the child or what's going to happen if he's going to want a father. Only because you don't want a man in your life doesn't necessarily mean that the child's not going to want a father in his life. So you think twice before you go ahead and ruin all kinds of people's lives just because you want to be little Miss Single and I don't need a man and all this kind of crap. Because if you have a child, you need a man. I don't care what you say. No, I, I totally agree with you on that, Jessica, and I thank you for the call. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, a long time, first time. Yes. Uh, I heard the news this morning on the radio, and apparently this idiot uh, had his name put on the birth certificate, so he was screwed from the start. And uh, the old saying, no good deed goes unpunished, uh, I guess it's coming back to roost. <laughs> well, that, in fact, isn't it interesting that the attorney in the case uh, for the, uh, the the doctor who donated the sperm is saying the exact same phrase that I've been saying here for years? Exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think the guy uh, definitely made a mistake, and uh, nobody else should be doing the same thing. No doubt about it. All right. Thanks for your time.
Well, I thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. We're talking about the doctor in the New York City area uh, who uh, was doing a friend a favor for a friend, you know, uh, uh, a lesbian colleague you couldn't conceive. He said, here, take some of my sperm. And now 18 years later, he's being told, pay up, pay child support. And uh, don't you think that's a compelling reason not to ever agree to donate sperm in any form? Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. Hey, the best thing to happen to men since remote control. Thank you. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Stephanie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Great. Good. Um, I have a question about this topic. My ex-husband got someone else pregnant while we were married, which is really a whole other topic. But the girl had papers sent to him waiving his rights as a father so he wouldn't have to pay child support but on the other hand he wouldn't have any rights to the child whatsoever is that a little loophole in this situation nope my understanding from attorneys and i'm not an attorney by the way my understanding from attorneys is you can never sign away the right of a child to child support that's interesting so he just basically signed away any right to have contact with the child but she still could have got him for child support later by the way still can you know what actually it's funny because she ended up doing a dna test and he wasn't even the father (laughs) 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 yeah who knows but i was just wondering about that so this guy's yeah oh well and why'd she need a dna test because she was sleeping with two guys at the same time yeah but if she didn't care about getting child support she wouldn't need a dna test but she didn't want her parents to know she was Mormon and didn't want her parents to know that she was sleeping with several guys at one time. So she pinned it on my ex-husband because they knew about him. See, because he was the ex-boyfriend. That was his ex-girlfriend. Wonderful. So, no, fabulous. That's hence why he's my ex. But anyway. <laughs> yes. So he he needs to listen to you, I think. Cause he's I think you. every man needs to listen to me because, uh, again, these stories keep coming up. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much I say. Yeah. How often I make these uh, warnings on the air it doesn't make any difference. I know. We'll keep doing the Lord's work, sir. <laughs> I am doing the Lord's work. Indeed, I am. All right, Tom. Have a good one. Stephanie, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm getting so excited I'm choking on my own spit here. What can I say? It's Jonathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Not much. I am freaking out over here. During my uh, college years, my first and second year, I went to the sperm bank because uh just, you know, needed some extra bucks and probably went, you know, 12 to 14 times and donated my, my uh, lovely specimen. And uh, now I'm freaking out. Oh really? I bet you are. I I I don't know what to do now. I'm just I'm sitting in my car and I just I can't even drive. I can't even think about anything. Well, uh, you know I've been warning guys about this for years, years. Oh man. I mean, nobody should be donating sperm because this is what's going to start happening more and more. I've been warning about it. Before anybody read stories about this, I said, watch, here's what's going to happen. And it is happening. It is. I'm just, uh, I'm thanking you for all your uh, good work you're doing, and uh, hopefully our kings can do better, and can you take me out Kobe style? You bet I can. Here you go. This is about us. She's so special to me. It beats in my heart. Yeah, there I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? You busy over there, Josh? No, not really. I just got off work. Just got home. 
So, no, I wanted to call in. I wanted to say about this uh, sperm bank thing. I mean, I'm not against it, but I think if you're willing to do it, you should have to deal with the consequences if they come up. I mean, you're having a kid. I mean, come on. No, but you see, there were no laws, and people believed that if you wrote a contract, that the contract would be honored. And the contract with the sperm bank would say things like, uh, your identity will be protected, it will be sealed forever, blah, blah, blah. Well, and on top of that, uh, when people uh, agree to do a favor for a friend, uh, when they have a written agreement, they would say things like, uh, like this guy had, you know, I'm not responsible, I, I'm doing this as a favor, I'm not looking to be a parent, I'm not responsible for, for support, and, and people would put that in writing. Now, I say that any two adults should be able to make an agreement and have it stick. They should, you're right, but there's also some adults out there that are still kids about every situation. They'll say anything. I mean, you know that. Well, uh, but the point is that if you do that with anything else in life, let's say you bought a car and you agreed to pay for it. Uh -huh. Down the line, if you stop paying for it, you can't just stop. You have an agreement. They'll take you to court. They'll get the money out of you one way or another. Okay. Uh, if you agreed, if, if I have a five-year agreement to come here to work. If tomorrow I decide, you know what, don't pay me. I don't feel like coming in. Guess what? It's not that simple. I have uh, an agreement. What's in writing goes, and uh, I'll be in court. Yeah, it's, I mean, contracts are like that. I mean, I'm in the, I've been in the military. I know how contracts work. All right. I mean, this is the one and only area in life where you can have a contract. And the contract specifically spells out, uh, here's a woman. She can't get pregnant. I've got sperm. I'm going to donate the sperm to her because I'm her friend. I'm going to say, here, put this in a Dixie cup for you. You do what you need to do with it. In return, you won't come after me for child support. You won't sue me. You won't accuse me. You won't uh, sign to us. This is the one area in life where you write a contract between two adults and later on, people say the, it's not worth the paper it's printed on. Was this guy, um, was he on the birth certificate or anything? He was on the birth certificate, but again, they had an agreement. I mean, there's an agreement, but he's on the birth certificate. That's not the that point. They had, father. you're not an attorney and neither am I. They had an agreement. The point is that agreements aren't worth the paper they're printed on. And all these people go out there and say, well, I'll help my friend. We'll just draft an agreement. We'll have my attorney draft something. It's it's a complete waste of time and money. That's the woman for you. They're going to, you know, they're going to take it. Well, the then the rule is simple. No donating sperm ever, ever yeah, under any circumstances. Don't ever do it. It's true. I would never donate sperm. It's not what I would do. Yeah. So I'm going to have a kid. It's going to be my kid. I'm not going to let someone else raise it thinking that I'm not a father. Well, there you go. I, I thank you for the call. It's Jody on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, my gosh, Tom. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Neither can I. I am so excited. <laughs> wow. I've been listening to you for almost 20 years, and I have never gotten through on your show. Here we are. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Anyway, all I wanted to say was, my sister and the baby daddy going through the same thing. You can sign your rights away only if you have an adoptive father. If there's someone there to step up, my sister thought the same thing. He didn't want nothing to do with her or the baby. They signed an agreement. The attorney said, nope, can't do it. Unless you've got another man to take over the legal responsibility, you cannot sign your rights away. So you're right, as always. Yeah, well, thank you for that. <laughs> I love you, Tom. Have a great night. You too, Jody. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jimmy on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Jimmy. Did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Oh, Jimmy, go ahead. How you doing, Tom? Hi, right, Jimmy. Good, good. Um, yeah, I, I didn't catch the first part of the show, but I just wanted to comment on something you said. Um, I actually signed my rights away. Uh, my first wife and I, we had a kid. And uh, she offered me uh, this deal with her lawyer to basically sign my rights away. This was years ago. And um, that was pretty much it, cut and dry. Since then, I've been free, haven't been paying nothing. So far. So far, but I mean, it's... How old, is, how old is that kid, presumably, now? Oh, like 
I don't even know, to be honest what, with you. Maybe, two? No, maybe seven. Seven. Well, this guy in New York found out when the kid turned 18. So if I were you, I wouldn't have any swagger about you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying, but, I mean, the judge looked right at me and said, you know, cut and dry, you understand that this is once you sign this agreement, you can't have anything to do with her. Now, and she can't take any money from you. And I Again. Like, it, uh, Hallelujah. You that's know I mean? that particular judge. There's a million judges. There's a million courts. And I'm telling you, generally, when somebody says, I'm bored, I can't afford to feed the kid, generally there's a judge out there who will come and get you. Yeah, I think I, I, it's possible, but I, I think in my case I lucked out. Well, I just think that you are in denial and you're engaging in wishful thinking. <laughs> Well, I, I'll get back in touch with you if I ever get that call down the line. Please do. And remember and who remember who told you so. Tom Likas, the father. Can, you, can you blow me? Can you blow me up, Tom? Well, of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Andrew on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you, man? Great. That's great. Hey, Tom, I was wondering if I'm about to, like, have sex with the girl, right? And I want her to sign a contract so in case she does get pregnant, it's a complete void. Can I do that or is it still by you can You can write any contract you like, but it won't stand up in court. Not even if it's before the action? You can. It doesn't matter when you write it up. Oh, okay. Thanks, Tom. Well, you were going to do that? Wait, wait, wait. Stop. Oh, yeah. I, I've been thinking about it. I mean, just in case, you know, there's like some girls are like, oh, if you ever have a baby, I'm going to keep it. Well, what I'm saying is, you know, sign this contract. So if you do have it, I'm not responsible. You can write down anything you like. I can. Uh, you can write down, I will be your slave. You can chain me up and beat me with a whip. Sign you. You can write that. Yeah, but it won't hold up in court, huh? Correct. All right. Thanks, Tom. Can you take me out, Lacey Peterson? Well, that would be tasteless, Andrew. Amber. Hey. Amber. Amber, make that be 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Chuck on the Tom Likish show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Chuck. How are you today? Great. I love your subject. I, uh, I've i never been a sperm donor in that situation, but I think the doctor obviously made a mistake, and I don't think it's a good idea for people to do that. My question is about the two lesbians that, that uh, ended up with the child. Did they adopt this child? I'm guessing that one of them is a blood parent. Uh-huh. But the other, the other part, we don't know whether whether she that that way. I assume if the child was adopted by both these female parents, that then the father would be uh, not on the hook. Um, I'm not an attorney. I don't know how that works. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they were smart, you'd never sign those adoption papers. You would always leave yourself the option of going after the guy. Well, yeah, especially if you're a woman, that's that's the deal. But right. anyway, I uh, I just wanted to uh, say how much I've enjoyed listening to you. I've been listening to you since you were uh, on a uh, unnamed uh, AM station in Los Angeles many years ago, and uh, I certainly wish that when I was younger, I would have had you around to advise me on uh, how to deal with uh, women and unwanted pregnancies and things like that. Well, I wish I was around for you, too. I can tell you that. <laughs> All right, Tom. Take me out with a bong here, will you? Here you go, Chuck. <coughs> Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. Listen, I know the reason why those agreements that people think they're signing aren't binding, okay? It's in order to have an enforceable contract, there has to be one of four elements present. And what they're, one, of, one of them is uh, you have to have mutual assent, which is that both parties agree. Secondly, you have to have, um, you have to be uh, legal, legal age or sound mind. And then you have to have what's called, it has to be lawful. 
and, and you cannot legally sign away your obligation to a child until he's 18 years old. Or beyond. Uh, yeah, depending upon the stipulation if you're in a divorce. But that's, yes, that's absolutely true. That's exactly right. The Tom Likas Show.